Hey guys, in this Master That Solo lesson, I'm going to show you how to play the awesome uh, guitar solo from uh, No Justice uh, by Harem Scarum, which has got the pretty much, I'd say, pretty underrated Pete Lesperance on guitar. It's a really, really um, great songwriter, hooky kind of riff writer, and his solos are just so melodic, as is this one. This is why it's such a great solo to look at. So, uh, I'm a half step down for this. <laughs> So I've got my E flat there, then A flat, D flat, G flat, B flat, and then that E flat in the top. Okay. Uh, so the first phrase sounds like this. So the first little phrase that we've got is pretty much a rundown E Phrygian dominant. So the scale kind of shape that you're looking for here. Is I've got 16, 13, 12 in the high E string. So that's my root note, major third, and a flat two, little flat nine. Which gives it that kind of little spicy flavour. Then I've got 15, 13, 12 in the B string. Then I've got 14, 13 in the G string. Then I've got 15, 14, 12 on the D string. And then 15, 14, 12 on that A string. And then 11th fret, again for the major third there, yeah. That's kind of our scale there. So we start it off though, um, playing 19th fret the high E string, and kind of sliding off. Now sliding, this articulation in the notes is a real signature Pete Lesburn's kind of thing, and it gives his uh, kind of lines and sound a very kind of um, slippery kind of melodic feel, almost vocal like. So when we're playing that 19th fret, slide off, then you're going to play 12th fret here of that B string and then we're going to see if we can do a little kind of sequence through the scale. So what I'm going to do is hammer on 12, 13, 15, kind of little triplet there. Then I'm going to do a hammer and pull off 12, 13 back to 12 in the high E string, back to 15 on that B string like that. Then I'm going to pick 12, 13, 16 in the high E string. Yeah. Then I'll go back to my little hammer and pull off 12, 13, 12 and then 15 in the B string. And then I'm going to do 12 on the high E string and then 15, 13, 12 on the B string. Okay, so it kind of goes that kind of little phrase there. Now once you get to this bit Puts a little bit of space in and he's going to put pairs of notes. So your first pair is 14, 13 in the G string. Give it a bit of vibrato there. Then I'm going to do 15, 14 on the D string. And then I'm going to do 15, 14 on the A string. And you can slide into that 15, that's kind of what he does. Then I'm going to slide 14 to 12. And then the 11th fret of that uh, A string. Yeah. So that little bit slowly goes. Yeah. When you put it together with the first bit, in fact, the whole thing slow sends it this. Yeah. Now the next phrase sends it this. This is an awesome phrase and I think what's really cool about it is it's not just your standard run up and down a legato scale. If Les Burns phrases this in such a cool way uh, with these little kind of pauses. Now we're playing over a D chord here. So arguably what we're playing here is almost um, like D Lydian pretty much. Yeah. So what I've got here is a scale form if we look at it as I've got 10, 9, 7 on the high E string. 10, 9, 7 on the B string. Then I've got 9, 7, 6 on the G string. 9, 7, 6 on the D string. Then we shift down to the 4th fret. And then I've basically got that, you know, uh, 7, 6, 4 there. 7, 5, 4 on the D string. A string, sorry. And then 7, 5, 4 on the E string. And the 2nd fret there. Though when he plays this, he doesn't kind of play that note. But that's kind of your form there. Yeah, so the way that we're going to sequence down this is we're going to have a pause and then the group of notes. 
So the first thing you're going to do is slide to that tenth fret with the fourth finger. And then what I'm going to do is pull off ten nine seven, so and then do ten nine seven pull off in the B string, and then hammer back up to the ten. So you're doing ten nine seven nine ten there. So that's kind of your little phrase there. And this is the 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 kind of phrase with the gap. So you have a pause, pause there, then you're going to come down again. So I'm doing 10, 9, 7 in that B string, then I do 9, 7, 6 in the G, hammer, 7, 9 again. And basically you, you would maybe, if you're pausing that, you'd kind of pick. And you might even get away with um, doing a little bit hammer from nowhere there. But I think he actually it picks the notes, but you could do either basically. So we've got that 10, 9, 7, 9, 7, 6, back up to 9, and then we come down, do the same thing, 9, 7, 6 in that G, 9, 7, 6 in the D, hammer back up to 9, yeah. Now from here, so we're on this 9th fret, I'm going to do, to do the transition, I'm going to think I start now from the middle finger, so hammer, 7 to 9, back to 7 to 6, slide and then hammer to 7. That little kind of phrase there. And then from here basically, I'm going to do, so I'm on that 7th fret, I'm going to do pull off 7, 6, 4, 7, 5, 4 in A string, hammer back up to the 7 there, so 7, 5, 4, 5, 7. Okay, and then from here, I'm basically going to do a, from the first finger, 4, 5, 7, 5, 4, 7, 5 in that high E string. Yeah, and then the last little phrase is you're going to slide up to 7th fret and then slide down to the 2nd fret, which is kind of the major third there. Okay. And that's an awful lot of words to describe what's going on, but slowly, it sounds like this. Yeah. So the thing about it is just getting that flow and the, the, the natural sensation of those pause points. You know, I'm going to mess up a little note there, but it's that kind of flow that you're going for. Yeah. Then the next little section sounds like this. So we're back to E Phrygian Dominant again. And we've got this really cool idea where uh, Les Prince is sliding up the high E string, probably ending around about 19th fret area. And once we've done that, we're going to play the, the high E string, kind of with tremolo picking, but it works out that you kind of end up doing like five notes. You know. And then you kind of have four at the end there, but I wouldn't worry too much about the exact number of notes, but getting the feel and knowing when to stop the phrase. You know, that kind of thing. So you get arrest their silence. Then you have 16th fret the high E string, half step bend, so you bend from the major third up to the fourth and back. And then slide off, again a gap. And this is what gives us uh, part of the solo, this really cool kind of, um, a kind of groove, I think. Okay. Next phrase sounds like this. So in this phrase we're still with the E Phrygian Dominant and we're going to be outlining the scale with these notes in the high E string. So 19th fret uh, of the E string there, then 12th fret, then 13th fret, then 10th fret, then 12th fret, and then 8th and 7th fret. Okay. Well what we're doing here is we're going to slide from the 19th fret to the 12th fret. We slide and then hit that 12th fret again. You could use your first finger for that. Then we use the second finger, play 13th fret, and then hit it again and slide to 10th fret. Yeah, so you've gone. Yeah. Then from here, I'm going to slide to the, uh, the pick the 10 and slide to 12th fret. Pick it again to the 8th fret, and then play 7th fret to end that phrase. Now at this point in the recording, um, 
The, the guitar that obviously Pete Les Prince has recorded with has got a whammy bar. I decided to do it in the Les Paul because the live footage I was checking out was playing the Les Paul plus, you know, I've just got the Les Paul and I think it's awesome. So on an on-trem guitar, what you could do is play that seventh note and kind of slide off if you want to get that kind of effect uh, is on the recording, yeah. So that phrase kind of goes like this. Okay. Next phrase sounds like this. So our harmonies change again back to the D. So arguably you could say we've kind of got like a and a Lydian thing going on again, D Lydian. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to bend ninth fret of that B string with a pinch harmonic. You know, so I'm closer to the end of the fingerboard here to get that harmonic. Pit the, pit, hit the pinch harmonic and then bend up a half step. Release and up a half step again. It's almost like wide vibrato actually. And then what I'm going to do is once I do that, those two bends, pull off to the seventh fret that B string, and I'm going to do nine seven pull off in the G string, nine seven pull off in the D, and then a nine seven pull off in the A string. Slide to the fifth fret, and then I play seventh fret of the D string. Vibrato, so it has this kind of feel to it. So it's kind of like a, uh, a six triplet once you get to that. So you want that kind of to flow quite nicely. Yeah. Uh, next phrase sounds like this. So you have a really cool kind of melodic, almost arpeggiated idea. Now we're still over this D. So if you look at these notes relative to the D, what you're going to be doing here is sliding to 9th fret that uh, low E string, which is basically the major 7 of D. Yeah. Then I'm going to uh, slide 7 to 9 on that A string with the first finger. So that's me sliding from the 2nd or the 9th to the major 3rd of that D. And then I go play 11th fret of that D string again with a little bit of a pinch harmonic. And that's your major seven again. Yeah. The watch out for the timing there. It's kind of like a, like a triplet, so it's like one and a two. Yeah. Next little bit sounds like this. Okay. So we start off with the same notes: ninth fret the E string, seventh fret again. But this time we're going to slide nine to twelve, and it's like a grace note. So it's almost like you're actually aiming for. The 12th fret there, so it's 9, 7, 9th fret to the 12th fret quick slide. Then I'm going to play 9th fret of that D string, 11th fret of the D, up to the 12th fret, and then 11th fret the D again. Yeah. yeah so that kind of thing. Then we have basically the chord now changed to an A. So what Les Prince does is he just comes down the chord tones, plays 14th fret of the B, 14th fret of the G, and then 14th fret of that D string. You get your third root, fifth there, a little triad pretty much. And vibrato on that note there. Okay, so slowly that bit sounds like this. Okay, next bit sounds like this. So this starts off with a little phrase. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a hammer, 9 to 11, pull off to 9 again. A little pull off like that, hammer pull off. Slide to the 7th fret. So it's a nice kind of slippery legato phrase. Then I'm going to play 6th fret with the same finger on that G string. Uh, and then to 7th fret with a pinch harmonic. Yeah, so it's kind of weird to get that where you're sliding back again with the first finger. That might find a little bit strange, but think about nailing the seventh fret with the second finger after it, and it'll, I think it'll help with the phrasing of it. Okay, now at this point we're over an E chord. Uh, possibly the E with a G sharp in the bass. So that's kind of your flat seven of the E chord, so it's almost like an E7 tonality. And then he plays down an E triad, so he plays 7th fret the high E string, 9th fret the B, 
and then ninth fret of the G uh, with the root note there and again there's a pinch of mimic on that so the notes pop yeah so that face kind of sounds like this slowly And it can be tricky to nail those two pinch harmonics. This one, slightly in front of that one when you're hitting the G string. Cool. Next phrase sounds like this. So we lead into the this little phrase with these notes. And I'm playing 9, 11 in the G string. And then 9, 10 on that B string. Yeah, and the chord kind of changes to a G at this point, I think. So it's descending down with E. Any kind of classical sounding. So over that, um, uh, basically you're almost aiming for the B note here, which is the third of the G chord. Yeah, it's that 12th fret there. Then I'm going to slide up to the 14th fret with the same finger. You could take it from the 12th fret or you could take the finger off and slide in kind of from nowhere to the 14th fret and then I play 10th fret the B string notice there's a that slide is staccato rest and then 10th fret the B string so slowly that goes yeah remember these cool little uh, sixths or inverted thirds depends on what you want to think about it so what I'm going to do is slide with the second finger 9 to 11 in the, in the G string here then once I've done that, I'm going to play the 11th fret of that G string and 10th fret of the high E string. Now, uh, I didn't check to see if Les Burns used hybrid picking or strums it with the pick. I use hybrid picking, so what I'm going to do here to play those two strings is I play the G string with the pick and my middle finger plucks the high E string like that. Yeah. Once I've done that, little rest, then I play this, so my middle finger is playing 12th fret now, but my third finger is playing 12th at the high E as well. Then I'm going to slide from 12 to 14 and back, like that. But you sit in the 14 a little bit longer. Then from here, I'm going to slide from nowhere to the 12 and the G and the high E string. And then I'll go back to the start with the first finger at the 10th fret, middle finger and that 11th fret there. So, so that kind of goes. Okay, like that, that kind of little phrase. Next phrase sounds like this. This phrase we're moving into an F chord. So we start off with something sounds like this. So what I'm going to be doing here is bending. 12th fret of the B string here. Use my third finger. Up a half step. Release it. And pull off to 10th fret on that B string there. But what you want to do with this first finger now is then roll and get it to the 10th fret of the G string there. So you might want to precede the, when you're doing the, the kind of movement, you're already anticipating the bar, if that makes sense. So remember, you might have your first finger crossing the 10th fret of the B and the G strings. And that's your root note of the F chord when you get to it. Then you have this phrase. So I'm going to be doing here is playing 19th fret of the high E string. I use my second finger and I bend half step really slowly when you get to the half step hit the string again so you've got a pre-bend release release it and then I'm going to play 17th fret that high E string yeah and now the reason I'm using my first finger here is now I'm going to bar again the 17th fret across the E and the B string so you're pretty much over an A chord now so that's your root and your fifth but this is a kind of triplet and it's uh, staccato so what you're going to so I play 17 in the high E, 17 in the B, 17 in the high E with that first finger. But let the notes pop, this is staccato feel. Then what I'm going to do is slide 17 to 15 in that B string. Then I play 17 in the high E string again, staccato, and then 15 in the B string. Yeah, so it kind of goes, so it kind of goes there. Uh, and then from here, I'm going to do a hammer and pull off 15 to 17, first to third finger and then slide to 14th fret on that B string with the same finger. Yeah, like that. So slowly that bit kind of sounds like this. Yeah. 
you know, and you might pick that note there. I think you can either use legato or pick the note, whatever kind of feels good to you. Okay, next phrase sounds like this. So this phrase starts with a slide 9 to 11 on the G string, and then I play 10 fret the B string. There, I use my second and first finger. So it's almost kind of a bluesy feel. But we're over this D chord again. You know, so I'm kind of sliding to that fifth. And then I'm going to bend from kind of the sixth to the major seventh. So it's 12th fret of that B string. Bend up, release, up again. And then I've got this little chromatic thing where I play 10, 11, 12 on the high E string. And the tricky thing here is after you've done that, I've got a pre-bend release, 12th fret of that B string again. So you have to transition very quickly with the third finger to the B string. But you do that pre-bend release, 11 on the G, back to 10 in the B string, and then a pull off 12 to 10 in the B string. Yeah. And then the final phrase sounds like this. So we've got some cool descending harmony here with a kind of D to A sharp, getting to this A chord. And the notes pretty much fall along with that. So we're going to play 13th fret the high E string, then 12th fret. Then I'm going to do a quick 10 to 12 hammer and pull off. And then ninth fret on that high E string there. So you're playing like a C sharp over there, so it's like a major third, that's what makes it sound so melodic. And then the last note, you slide to 12th fret on that kind of uh, B string there, which is over an E chord. Yeah, so that slowly sounds like this. Yeah, and you can slide into that note or you can play the note. I like to slide into it just because it adds again that kind of slippery, slidey, Les Burns kind of feel to it. And that's it, yeah? So, it's a really, really melodic kind of solo and the reason for this, I think it's a lot to do with the the phrasing, the way that Les Burns plays, plays, but obviously the, his note choice as well. He has these fast phrases at the beginning, you know, scalar. <laughs> And that kind of run, you know, Guthrie Governor talked about this before, if you want to make these kind of a whole bunch of notes interesting, you make them rhythmically interesting rather than just being this chain of kind of loads of notes. Having little pauses gives this kind of lyrical feel to it. And then basically, once he gets passed into the kind of, you know, in the chords, this kind of really classical, almost queen-like kind of section, he's hitting all these kind of chord tones. You know, and it has that kind of Brian May kind of quality, that melodic kind of thing. So this is a thing to think about in your own solos. If you're wanting to get that melodic aspect to it, know what the chords are, hit those chord tones pretty much. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. If you want access to uh, the in-depth lesson for this Master That Solo, please uh, go and check it out on uh, the Master the Guitar Patreon group. You've got access to the Helix patch, how I came up with the tone, plus you've got the animated tab for the solo, plus you'll get extra scale diagrams and a little bit more theory about what's going on in the kind of solo. So if you're interested in that, please go and check out uh, the Patreon group. Uh, if you're not subscribed, if you like this, if you want to see more solo lessons, more riff lessons, more uh, upcoming lessons, please hit uh, the subscribe button uh, and hit that notification bell as well so you can be kept up to date with things. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as well if you wanted to uh, check me out on those kind of platforms. So thanks for watching guys, it's always good to do a bit of uh, Harem Scarum uh, and hopefully I'll see you soon. <laughs>